Should you buy amp your receiver? That's a question we're going to be answering in today's video. Hey friends, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics, and I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos like this from my desk here. I'm trying to get as many videos done before I move, so these are not well-produced videos. I hope you guys understand. So the topic today I want to talk to you about is should you use the buy amp feature in your AV receiver? For those that don't know what the buy amp means, uh, we did a video on the differences between buy amping and buy wiring. By amping, basically, you use two different amplifiers to power a single speaker, assuming that the speaker is by amp capable. Whereas by wiring, you just connect two speaker wires from the same amplifier to the speaker by separating the terminals, the high frequency and the low frequency. So I want to show you a speaker like this only has one set of terminals. If your speakers look like that, you can't use the by amp feature. Just ignore this whole video altogether. But if your speakers look like this, you can see there's one cable here that's going to one amplifier, that's the bass section, and then the other cable here that's going to the mid and tweeter section. That's by amping. Now this is passive by amping, and what passive by amping means is you're still not taking out the analog crossover. It's still in the speaker. There's no digital DSP or anything like that going on. Bandwidth limiting of the amplifiers, none of that. In reality, the best type of biamping is active biamping with active crossovers. And you can see that in the RBH SVTRS speaker system that we've covered in the past. Um, but in this video, we're talking about passive biamping. Should you use that feature on your AV receiver? But before I answer that question, I want to give you a little history about this whole biamping feature that came about with receivers. So in the early 2000s, I was reviewing a flagship Denon receiver as the AVR 5803. That was a seven channel monster. The thing was rated at 170 watts a channel times seven, had a huge 1.2 kVA toroid transformer in it. That thing could hit almost rated power with all channels driven. That's how they built receivers in the early 2000s before we stamped all these extra logos to do Atmos and all the HDMI switching. This is how it was back then. And I just want to give you an example of how this thing looked. This was a beast. You can see right here, it had a huge power supply, huge toroid, big capacitors, two giant rows of heat sinks, plenty of ability to dissipate heat. Now, this receiver did not have the biamp feature, but I jerry-rigged it. I said to myself, at the time I reviewed this receiver, I was only doing a five-channel speaker setup. I go, why should I waste the amplifiers? Why not use those amplifiers? Because I know this is a really powerful receiver. So what I managed to do is I took the preamp outputs of the main channels, plugged them into an unused input, and reassigned those the two channels to another zone and, and selected that input. And I found how to properly gain them by using some SPL uh, pink noise. And that was the first biamped AV receiver to my knowledge I wrote up a whole, I wrote this whole procedure in my review, and this is in the early 2000s. We did the same thing for the AVR 3805. We showed how to buy amp that receiver. This became so popular that I convinced Denon to actually make it a feature in their newer receivers. And then maybe a year or two later, they started putting the buy amp feature in their receivers. Then, of course, when Denon did it, Yamaha had to do it. So then when Yamaha did it, Ankyo had to do it. And, you know, within a couple of years, pretty much all the major receiver manufacturers were offering the buy amp feature. And I was like, woohoo, this is a victory. This is awesome that we have this ability to do buy amping on receivers. The problem, though, here's the issue, is now they started putting this buy amp feature in $500 receivers, $600 receivers. They started putting it in receivers that really didn't have a giant or a good adequate power supply to even benefit from doing that. So I wanna answer this question as best as I can. I don't wanna deal in absolutes, because as you know, only Sith Lords deal in absolutes. But a general rule of thumb is if you buy a really stout receiver, which is hard to find these days unless you get the flagship models, you're kind of wasting your time with the buy amp feature. If you're buying an entry level five or $600 receiver that has seven channels and you're only using five channels, I would not use the buy amp feature because you're looking at 
when you're looking at these inexpensive receivers, like here's a Yamaha, and this was like a thousand dollar receiver at the time. This was this did not have a very good amp section in it. The power supply was not capable of driving four ohm loads. It just did not. It wasn't like their predecessor model. So in this case, I would say don't use the bi amp feature. And then here's like an inexpensive Sony. You can see it has a small heat sink, not a lot of ability to dissipate heat. But when you're looking at some of the flagships like the Marantz SR8015 or the Denon 8500, you can see a common pattern here. You got dual heat sinks, big power supplies. Uh, look at look at back in the day when we had the Yamaha RXZ11. This thing had you know tons of power, giant e core transformer, big heat sinks. I think I even have a B and K uh, amplifier here as well. I could show you, but these were these were back in the day when you had big power supplies, plenty of ability, plenty of overhead to basically use those unused amplifiers. So if you're buying today like a nine or eleven channel receiver and you're only using seven channels, I would probably say you have decent margin to use those extra two channels to buy amp your speakers. But don't buy amp a speaker that's just like a bookshelf speaker. Don't waste an amplifier on a tweeter, okay? If you're going to buy it, make sure you actually have a base section. Like these are the Bowers and Wilkins. These are a great little bookshelf speaker. I would not buy amp these speakers regardless. But like these Paradigms, they've got a separate base section here with these two woofers, these two 8-inch woofers. Then they have a mid and tweeter. So I would definitely, if you have like an 8015 or a top-of-the-line Denon receiver, or a top of the line pioneer with the with the class D's, like the really high end flagship models. Definitely, if you're not using all the channels and you're only using seven of the channels, um, you have margin. I would I would run one set of um, outputs to the base section and then the other set to the mid or mid and tweeter section, and you could potentially get better sound. You might not get it might not be noticeable at low volumes, but you might get a little extra overhead, especially when you're doing two channel listening. And that's when it's really most beneficial when you can add more power to those speakers for two channel. Great. But if it's an inexpensive receiver that has a, you know, a skimped power supply. And if you look at our measurements and it doesn't really deliver that much power with five or seven channels driven, don't waste your time by amping. You're not going to get much benefit from that. So guys, I hope you found this. Um, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you're doing with your receiver. Do you have a buy amp feature on yours? Tell me what you're doing about down below. What you're doing with those extra amplifiers? Are you using it for another zone? Are you doing something else with it? I kind of like to know what you're doing there. And I appreciate you guys listening. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit that like button. Hit the thumbs up. Share it. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. Um, you get direct access to us. You can ask questions. You can suggest video topics. We appreciate the support. It's always great to have that on our channel. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.